Hi, my name is Krathian. I'm a member of the Free Flyer Technical Support Team. In addition to working on the tech support team, I'm also contracted as an operations engineer with NASA's Conjunction Assessment Risk Analysis Group, or CARA, where I'm responsible for monitoring over 65 plus of NASA's assets and performing risk mitigation maneuver analysis when a conjunction event is reported. Primarily, Free Flyer is used in the risk mitigation maneuver planning and modeling to ensure that any upcoming event is mitigated to a probability of collision of 1 e to the minus 10 or lower. Today, I'm going to discuss how to assess potential risk mitigation maneuvers from a conjunction data message, also known as a CDM, in Free Flyer by reviewing the Close Approach Maneuver Sample Mission Plan. The Close Approach Maneuver Mission Plan demonstrates Free Flyer's ability to parse a conjunction data message in JSON or KVN format to calculate the time of closest approach, or TCA, and probability of collision, PC, for a conjunction of two spacecraft in low Earth orbit. Then it is used to plan a risk mitigation maneuver, or RMM, to reduce the PC value to zero for the calculated TCA, and plots the required maneuver size and resulting range at TCA. This mission plan demonstrates the typical conjunction assessment process used within industry to progress through the analysis and mitigation steps for an identified event. At this point, an optimal maneuver has been found with the maneuver epoch of August 13, 2018 at 0203 UTC. We have now executed that maneuver and are going to visualize the difference between our original orbit and the RMM orbit. Once the mission plan reaches TCA, a pre and post maneuver report is generated in the output folder that details the pre and post spacecraft state, maneuver size, and fuel consumption. Now let's review the close approach maneuver sample mission plan code in Free Flyer. To open the sample mission plan, we're going to click on the Browse Sample Mission Plans link on the Free Flyer home screen. This will open a window to a folder that stores all the sample mission plans provided with Free Flyer. This specific sample mission plan is provided in the Demos Mission Tier folder, where we can open it up directly to the mission screen sequence. Now that we've opened the mission plan, let's take a look at the object browser and the externals available to us. We can see that no objects are created in the object browser, and when going to the externals tab, there's only one available for the CDM procedures. This external is used for creating structs for importing CDMs in JSON and KVN format, as well as um, performing conversions from the RTN to MJ2000 frame. We can see in this first struct that we are doing a conjunction data structure, which is a, con uh, a struct that contains a number of strings to pass information collected from the CDM. We can see that there's this information for Satellite 1 and at Satellite 2. In addition, we have the actual covariance conversion procedure, as well as procedures for parsing the JSON CDM format and then populating your spacecraft's covariance for both the primary and secondary. we can see that this is repeated again for the KVN format. Now that we've reviewed the external, let's take a look at the actual code. In our first freeform here, we can see that we are setting up a number of different objects. Um, in the first group, we have four sets of arrays for handling the burn size, PC results, range results, and your rendering order, a differential corrector that will be used with a targeter throughout in the mission plan, matrices to hold our primary and secondary covariance as well as the primary and secondary covariance in the RIC frame, a spacecraft for our primary maneuver and secondary, a string for our CDM KVN file name, four time spans to handle the burn epic, the TCA from CDM, TCA computed, and our TCA computed for no maneuver, a time span array to hold all of our burn results, and then a multitude of variables to handle the approach angle, file types, maneuver range, maneuver, minimum burn size, minimum range, the PC, range of TC, range rate, and then our status and target PC. In our next freeform, the set CDM file type and file name, 
we can see that we use the file type variable to define what type of CDM uh, format will be read in. And then we use an if loop to actually set the CDM file name and then determine which procedure will be called to parse that file and then initialize our objects in FreeFlyer. Now that we've parsed the CDM information, in our next freeform, we're going to initialize the spacecraft. We can see this is done by setting the epic, propagator step size, body scale, and color for the primary and secondary spacecraft. And then once those properties have been set, the mission plan converts the covariance reported in the CDM from the RIC frame to the MJ2000 frame for both the primary and secondary spacecraft, and sets the covariance matrix. Next, we'll set the propagator covariance flag to true for all three spacecraft in our mission plan. This will inform FreeFlyer to automatically propagate the spacecraft's covariance with each step command in addition to any orbit determination processes. Finally, in this freeform, we set the state transition matrix to use variational equations and then save the initial states for the primary and secondary spacecraft. In our next freeform, we configure the impulsive burn that will be used for our RMM by creating an impulsive burn object and setting its attitude system to the VNB. Once in the VNB frame, we will set the burn direction to be specifically in the velocity axis by using the array 100 and giving a specific impulse of 200 seconds. In our next freeform, we're going to configure the covariance proximity zones by adding a proximity zone for the 1 sigma, 2 sigma, and 3 sigma ellipsoids to our primary, secondary, and maneuver primary spacecraft that are being used within our mission plan. We then set the colors and deactivate all proximity zones in the secondary because we want it to be used for display only. In our next freeform, we're going to create and configure the view windows. We have two view windows in this, in this freeform our primary conjunction view and our polar view. Both will contain the primary and secondary spacecraft and give us an overview of what is happening up until TCA. In the next part, we create and configure our plot windows. In this case, we have a burn size plot and a range plot. Both of these will be used to actually report out the information for the required burn size at an epoch and the resulting range at TCA due to that burn. Um, initiated that epic. Once we have our plot windows, we need to configure our plot series. So in this case, we have four plot series, our TCA series for the burn size plot, TCA series for the range plot, our optimal burn size marker, and then the optimal range marker. So this will help to identify visually the optimal maneuver. Next, we're going to create a window frame overlay and a status overlay to help inform the user that's watching the view windows of the current situation and an overall perspective. We can see here that there's multiple shapes that we're adding to our window status overlay to update us on the current epic, the status, our time to TCA, the computed probability of collision, the computed range, the relative velocity between our two spacecraft, the approach angle, and then finally we actually will use our output layout to configure the output workspace to place our windows in specific areas as well as our plot windows. And then we apply our updates. In Freeform 8, we are going to propagate our spacecraft by stepping the primary and secondary to 15 minutes before the conjunction. Um, once we are at 15 minutes before the conjunction, we set the propagator step size to be a time span of one second, and then report out to our console that we're beginning propagation of the primary object based off of our CDM. Next thing is we'll enter a while loop where the primary and secondary spacecraft our step to 15 minutes after our expected conjunction. During this time, we're mapping the primary covariance ellipsoid as well as the secondary covariance ellipsoid, and then computing the minimum range over time, the approach angle, and the range rate.
Based off our calculated range rate, we can report a summary after passing the close approach when the range rate changes to positive. This will compute the next TCA, and then step our primary and spacecraft to that computed TCA. Once we're there, we actually will calculate the PC using a hard body radius of 50 meters, as well as the current primary and secondary covariance in the RIC frame. We'll then update our status uh, on our window overlay with our calculated miss distance, and then report to the console that a TCA has been identified for our primary and secondary objects. It then will report the TCA in the console and exit our loop to identify that propagation was uh, completed. And again, we can see that during this loop, we're updating our overlays to actually inform our status of the current uh, conjunction. Finally, in the while loop, we update our views. And then, if we find that the PC is greater than zero, we will now have the mission plan in RMM and inform the user via the console. Finally, on this freeform, we're going to update the output layout by showing the window frames and minimizing output windows. In Freeform 9, we're going to target a maneuver window. After finding the exact TCA in the previous Freeform, we're now going to restore the initial states for both our primary and secondary spacecraft, and then propagate to 12 hours prior to TCA. Once we step to our time before TCA, we're going to save this state for use in our final visualization and then report out to our console that RMM planning has begun. In the next portion, we're going to save off our previously computed TCA and set the differential corrector to a max iteration of 100. Now, after we set the max iteration, we're going to enter a while loop, and this is going to compute the cost to perform an RMM at a 10 minute increment from 12 hours before TCA up to 10 minutes before TCA, and then determine what is the optimal maneuver. We can see this is done by mapping the primary covariance and secondary covariance ellipsoids, and then stepping our, both our spacecraft toward TCA. After each step, we're saving the current state for both the primary and secondary. Once we save our current state, we then enter our targeting loop to compute a maneuver that will result in a PC of zero. We can see this is done by varying the impulse of burn direction with a basic seed value and a small perturbation. We then apply the maneuver to our primary spacecraft only, save off the burn epoch, and then step to our TCA and compute the new TCA as well as the maneuver range that results from the executed maneuver. After we exit our targeting loop, we're going to restore our states to the previous, and then we're going to save the results so that we can find the optimal maneuver uh, later on in our mission plan, and then update the burn direction plot and our range plot. In Freeform 10, we're going to plot the optimal maneuver. We're going to accomplish this by plotting a vertical line at TCA in our plot windows. We then are going to identify the optimal maneuver time by computing the minimum burn size, sorting the maneuver opportunities by burn size, which is the cost in delta V, and then filtering out all opportunities with costs higher than the minimum burn size. Next we're going to sort the maneuver opportunities by epic so that they increase in time. We're going to report to the console that an optimal maneuver has been found, and then plot the optimal maneuver at a burn, minimum burn size and earliest opportunity. We then want to report out all this information to our console so that the user was informed, and then we will update our window frame and minimize the plot windows using our output layout manager. In Freeform 11, we can see that we are adding additional output windows to view what our conjunction will look like after performing our maneuver. We see that we create three new view windows, our orbit view, our maneuver close view, and our secondary close view, 
that all contain the primary, secondary, and maneuver spacecraft. Once we've created and configured the view windows, we then configure the output workspace to set the window positions and size, and then update the window frame visibility to be zero. In the final freeform, we are going to visualize and report the optimal maneuver. We do this by restoring our primary and secondary spacecraft from our state of 12 hours before TCA. We then initialize the maneuver primary spacecraft by copying the configuration from the primary. We'll then set the propagator step size for all three spacecraft to be synced, and then we will visualize the secondary's hard body radius in our output windows. Next, we'll then set icons in our orbit view window to allow us to visualize the location of our primary and secondary objects as they are orbiting around the Earth. Next, we then update our orbit view and our maneuver close view, and we set the output layout manager for the window position and window size. Finally, we report out to our console display that we are displaying the visualizations of our optimal maneuver, and then we enter a while loop where we are mapping the primary sigma ellipsoid and the maneuver primary sigma ellipsoid and stepping to our TCA after executing our maneuver. You can see that inside of our while loop we have an if loop to apply the burn at the optimal identified time found in our targeter in the earlier freeform. And throughout our while loop, we are updating our output windows. After updating the output windows, we're going to adjust the view as we get closer to TCA so that it's easier for an operator to view the upcoming conjunction and see the difference between our original orbit and our maneuver orbit. Finally, once we've completed our while loop, we then are going to identify the TCA location using an annotation update our orbit view, and then generate a report for our maneuver that contains the pre and post update state, as well as the maneuver size and the fuel consumed. This completes our review of the close approach maneuver sample mission plan to assess potential risk mitigation maneuvers using a CDM. If you found this to be useful, you can check out the rest of our how-to videos on our AI Solutions YouTube page. Otherwise, if you have any additional questions or issues, please feel free to reach out to our technical support team by emailing us at techsupport at ai-solutions.com or calling us at 301-306-1756, extension 2.